we're recording. Hi, everybody. It's Marianne Bailey, the senior tutor with OnlineTechLessons.com. And today we are interviewing uh, Sharon Montgomery, who is our HIP Senior Spotlight of the Month for September. And Sharon is known as, let me get this right, the white-headed singing bling queen social worker. Did I get that right, Sharon? That would be me. That would be me. Welcome, be welcome, me. Sharon. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, and you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for being on with us yeah. today. Well, you know, this is an honor for me. This is a privilege. Uh, I count it an honor, and uh, thank you for asking me to be a part of it, because I am a hip senior, that's for sure. <laughs> And you're in with us on, on, the, on the ground level. We're going, doing nothing but moving forward and growing up. So being here good, in the very beginning, good. you'll be able to say, I, I knew them when. <laughs> there you go. And that'll be an honor for sure. So for thank sure. you for being with us. So you are yes. a social worker with VTOS. And I know that, is that, correct. that allots you a lot of uh, privilege with working with a lot of really great people. And being a senior yourself, I'm sure you can relate to them. Um, quite a bit more than, say, somebody that's in their 30s that's just getting started. Am I right about that? When, that is correct. When I was doing my undergraduate work at uh, Miami University, I had a professor, her name was Dr. Sandra Reagan, and out of a fluke, I took the gerontology uh, course, just because it sounded interesting and at the time my dad was had dementia alzheimer's diagnosis had had it for quite some time and uh, ups and downs with that he was going through a lot of changes cognitively and it was very difficult you know as uh, children there were four of us there's four of us and, and as the children of someone that is facing dementia, Alzheimer's, we didn't understand it. We, you know, we, we were raised in a church atmosphere. And so we were always taught never to make up a story and never to lie. And my dad would make up these horrendous stories. And we were very, very, very adamant about saying, Dad, that's not true. That's not true. And it would make him angry because we didn't understand that disease. And as I was going through my education, went back to school in 2004 to get at least a bachelor's degree, uh, I was faced with my husband having major open heart surgery and had a quadruple bypass. Didn't have anything as far as my education to be complete it was and I had a theological degree but it wasn't a liberal arts degree so even though I had a bachelor's in theology it really didn't get me anywhere so what I had to do was go back to school and start at the where I left off which was at the University of Louisville I left off at a junior at University of Louisville U of L and uh, started there with Miami and they accepted all of my credits, thank God, and had to make a choice of what field I wanted to get into. So I asked of different ones, what do you think, what do you think? And it all came down to if I wanted to continue my education in an early education K through four, then I was going to have to take algebra and I was going to have to take a, a foreign language. Well, no, 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 I, I wouldn't have to do that. Forget <laughs> that mess. Forget that mess. Ain't no way. So I said, well, what is this social work? What's that all about? Do I need to take a foreign language? Nope. Don't need to take a foreign language. Don't worry about that. I said, well, what about the math part? Do I have to take algebra? They said, oh, no, no, just statistics and economics. And I said, well, what does that entail? Oh, it's like writing a checkbook. It's like doing your checkbook. So I thought, well, I, I'm pretty good at that. So I think I'll just do that. So in the process of it, getting back to the gerontology course, I took the gerontology course and Dr. Reagan came to me and she said, now, Sharon, I, I have to let you know this. 
I never give out A pluses. An A plus, you have to really be good in my class to get an A plus. She said, but not only do you get an A plus, but I need to ask you a question. And I said, well, what would that be? And she said, well, have you thought about what you're going to do as far as in your bachelor's degree, what's going to be your major or your minor, basically? Uh, You're in social work, but you've got to have something else. And I said, well, I don't know. And she said, well, uh, let me just kind of share something with you. She said, you know, you need to think about gerontology. You need to think about uh, health and gerontology because there are two things that will help you to get a job and to help you in a career. And that is, first of all, your personality. When you open your mouth, elderly people will trust you, number one. There's a second thing that is going to help you, but I don't want to hurt your feelings. I said, well, you ain't going to hurt my feelings. What do you mean? Well, I don't know if this will hurt your feelings. I said, listen, just, just tell me, doc. Just tell me what you're trying to say. And she said, well, it's your hair. Your hair will get you before a lot of elderly people. You will be able to get in their homes. You'll be able to get close to them because of the white hair. The white hair stands for experience and wisdom. Well, I took her advice. I did. And so How old were I you went at that in. Point? I was 48. Okay, so you you had white hair really young. My hair turned white, started turning white when I was 18. Oh, wow. Clairol was very much, you know, only your hairdresser knows for sure, and I used a lot of Clairol. (laughs) My normal hair color is dark black, and I'm going to jump up here and show you this picture of my family who we were gospel singers. When we first started out, I want you to see this right here. Can you see that picture? Yeah. Can you see it? All right. As you're looking at that picture, look at the one be right above dad. This is this was my dad. To the far left is my dad. And see the person standing up behind him? Yep. That would be me. Oh, wow. With dark yeah. black hair. See the black hair? We all, but it was our mom that had the white hair. And she would use certain dyes and stuff on her hair, you know. Oh, didn't want people to know that it was really white. But after a while, it don't work anymore. You get to where you can't cover the white hair. I can't cover my hair no more. And my husband came to me and he said, honey, he took me to a mirror and he said, I want to show you something. He said, I want you to pull your hair back like this and tell me what you see. I said, well, it's white. Now he said, here's the key. Pull your hair up from the back and look at it and tell me what you see. Well, it's white. He said, honey. You're white headed all over. But it's okay because you'll be my platinum blonde. And I love platinum blonde. Please stop dyeing your hair. So I went through a counter frost. You know what that is? That's when you start getting lighter and lighter with the dye. And then eventually they pulled, did a, did a frost on my hair and pulled out parts of it and made it, they just put, they made it white, you know, on the end. It was already white at the root and everything. And as I went along, then they cut my hair, my stylist would cut my hair. It kept getting whiter and whiter till it was totally white. 
And that was when I was, let's see, I think I was about 52 then, went total white. And have it turned back. Have it looked back. It is what it is. You know, it is what it is. It's gorgeous. But it's a it's good gorgeous. thing. Thank you. Well, so you, you know, a lot me. of people pay. Huh? No, sorry. Go ahead. I said a lot of people pay good money to have what I already have. Yeah. You know? So why change what's perfect? If it's if it looks good, just go with it. And that's what I did. I just went with it. From that point on, didn't care if anybody else liked it. My husband liked it. And that was all that was important all to me because matters. he was my covering. He was my covering. And I thought, you know, Michael loves it. That's all that matters. So that's what I did. And I've been married to the man for 39 years. So he ain't going nowhere and neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. That's oh. amazing. That's a long time. Yeah, it was 39 years in June. Yeah. Well, happy anniversary. And I'm getting Lee. comfortable. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. So you Back told me now. you told me that you're the, the Whitehead singing bling queen social worker. So we've covered yes. social work some. Um, tell us about yes. the bling part. I know we were talking before we got on camera about, about that a little bit. Show us well, your bling. Let me, yeah. So see, I wear this. Can you see the blingy watch? Yep. I don't know if you can. Do yep. you see how blingy? Yep. Okay. See the bling ring. Bling. Here's bling pin. Here's the other. Are you there? Here yep. we go. Here's my other side. And then, of course, you got to have earrings. And then if you look at my glasses, can you see my glasses? I can. They're gorgeous. They're bling. Do you wear bling Saint Laurent shoes? or something like that. Yes, I do. I wear uh, my tennis shoes. has glitter on them. They're glittery. I wear Easy Spirit. Uh, I order them special because uh, certain people won't wear it, but I do. And the reason why I chose the bling is because for my dementia, Alzheimer's patients, whether it's a man or a woman, but especially my ladies, they love the bling. It brings back a memory to them of their own lives, of how they love their costume jewelry. And they will talk about their costume jewelry. And at Christmas, well, actually, November of every year until probably this year, I won't be able to because of COVID. Right. But every November, I would go to a jewelry show that is held in Gatlinburg through the Norton Jewelers, and uh, it, you buy wholesale. And I have a cousin that's worse bling than me. She's <laughs> blonde-headed, thin, and you know, I'm kind of heavy set, so I got to have some extra stuff on me, you know, divert the attention away from my <laughs> hind end. Oh, is that what but I'm forgetting anyway, is all the bling. Got it. <laughs> with, that's exactly right, honey. They, they, well, but my patients absolutely love the bling the ladies do. And so what I'm able to do, what I'm able to do, was able to do every November, I would save up money during the year, and when I went to the jewelry show, I could get costume jewelry, bracelets, and all that. See, look here. See that bracelet? Somebody did a lot of work on that bracelet. Don't you think? Yeah, absolutely. Look at it. It's pretty. I paid five, I paid five dollars for that wholesale. Oh, so wow. here's the deal. I gave away jewelry at Christmas to all of my ladies. Now, I would say to my man, my men patients, if you want bling, I can bring you bling, but I've got another idea that I can bring you. And honestly, I had two or three that wanted the bling, so I had to give them bling. And normally they were like a a, a necklace that was real blingy, and uh, they that's what they wanted. But uh, all of my ladies got blinged on their birthdays and Christmas. Yep, absolutely. Still do it. Still do it. If I'm in a facility, which I haven't been able to do that since March because of COVID, uh, but when I would go to a facility, if one of my little ladies was having a bad day and uh, she mentioned that she liked what I had on, 
I take it off and give it to them because to me, it was such an awesome little thing. What an expensive we, we, five dollars or a dollar every day, we throw it away. Yeah. And here, this gave joy to these little ladies and sometimes men. And then, you know, to me, it, it, it made me know that I was making some sort of a difference that day in their life. And that's rewarding. I I'm think sure that we need to live right our now. lives. Huh? I'm sure they're missing you right now. Yes, they are, but you know what? We do a lot of FaceTime. Okay. And that was be when my they next can question. still see when they can still see my face, that's good. You know, and they know I'm still involved. That is worth it for them, you know, just to know that I'm still around. I'm not going anywhere. I don't have COVID. I tested negative for it the one time I went to check. So I'm good to go. Good to go. That's amazing. So you told me that your family used to sing. We're kind of going backwards in time in this, in this interview with us. And that's, that's fine. okay. Um, what is your, you, you guys had a gospel singing group. Is that still your favorite go-to music to sing? That and the old hymns, the old church hymns, that's a huge big thing with most of the dementia patients and most of my patients right now. But if they don't have a religious background, I'll sing things like, uh, uh, you can call out my name and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Things like that. Yes, that is that's awesome. what I do. Yep, and I think, but uh, the, my, my most requested is amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I feel like I need that a candle. A wretch like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Twas blind, but now I see. Things like that. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. So you have the white headed singing bling queen social worker. That's what I am. That is amazing. Fit. That is amazing. I'm yeah. glad that Shelby Duncan introduced us. So I am glad that, that Shelby, Shelby um, is put of us together. phenomenal. I love Miss Shelby. She is, there's only one Shelby. But like there's only one Sharon Montgomery. There's only one Shelby Duncan that I love her. She is awesome. Awesome. Yes. I hear there's Anyone only that one Marianne knows? Bailey too. So. Huh? <laughs> I hear there's only one Marianne Bailey too. My, well, even, there you go. Even, even my daughter says, you know, she's just, I, we talk about, uh, she's at that age where uh, she's 22. So she's still, you know, dating. She's not engaged or married yet. And sometimes she has to warn like her boyfriends, like my mom can be a bit much, but she doesn't mean anything bad by it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I, they've made many excuses uh, about me over the years. But I, like I said, when you get above your 60s, in your 60s, the hardest birthday was last year for me. It really was. When I turned 66, September the 2nd. So see... I will be the feature for around my birthday on your little magazine thing, which I thought was very appropriate yes, because yes, I will no longer be 66. The only thing that was hard about it to me was because I was turning the numbers around. Okay. So this year, there ain't no turning around this year, downhill till I get the big seven zero. <laughs> However, 66 just did not set well with me, just did not. So I will be happy when I turn 67 in September. 
because even though I can't turn the number around, I'm not 66. <laughs> if that, you know, people at 40 and 50, you know, I had a sister that locked herself up for a few days when she turned 30. I was like, what? That's crazy. But <laughs> it really bothered me to say 66. Now, ain't that crazy? It's just crazy, crazy. Now, when I turned 50, the government locked me up because that was this past March. <laughs> Uh, so I yes, spent my 50th yes, birthday yes, under yes. under lockdown. So I was just like, "There right, you go." There I guess you go. we're gonna celebrate 51, hopefully. Uh-huh. Well, you know, I haven't been back out in the field very much at all since March, and uh, it has been very it's been difficult. Uh, but I have to say, you know, everybody thinks being at home is so wonderful. The thing that it is for me is it's more work. It really is because I was at least traveling about 500 miles every week, maybe a little more at times because I covered, um, I live in Butler County, but I covered Montgomery County, Clark County, Greene County, um, parts of um, all keep going the other way. What's the one? Champaign, uh, a lot of different counties, about um, seven. Um, and and so, you know, driving a lot. I do miss that. I really, really do. Um, but what it has caused me to have to do is um, I have to do do more patients every day. So the paperwork, our paperwork is all by hand. We don't have the electronic paperwork, to do, you know, now. Our company doesn't. So ever since I've been with them for five years, it's all been handwritten. And when you have to write about 175 pages of notes in one week, that's a lot. But um, I keep up with it. I mean, you know, I'm not behind in anything. I pride myself in that. You know, I get it done, uh, do it diligently. Um, yeah, it's just who I am. Yeah, just who I am. Yeah, yep. I've I've always had jobs that entailed a lot of driving as well, and this is the first time in a very very long time that you know I've been almost exclusively working from home. Um, a lot of the stuff that I was doing dried up because of COVID. So you know, just right. being able to get on and and talk to people like you and and learn about different people in different places and stuff like that has been. Um, really nice that I've been able to take that time to to make these connections with people and to get the hip senior started and get that growing. Um, that's been, uh, I think I told you earlier, that's been uh, growing steadily in my head for nine years, but in all actuality, it's been since June. So it's um, been nice to be able to finally get this off the ground. So there's been some highlights well, you know, for me and, and some sad things with people having COVID and stuff, but. Right. There's there's something about though being on the ground with a, a, a breakthrough, a ground floor um, type, uh, whether it's a business, churches, a career, your education. It, it, there's something special about that, and I I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm very honored that Shelby and you would consider me to be a part of that because I've always been. A groundbreaker. I've always been a person. I I call myself the round peg trying to fit in a square <laughs> hole. I never, I've never, you know, I'm very different. And and I've learned over the years that being different is a good thing. Yep. There's nothing wrong with being peculiar. But I'm definitely peculiar. Yep, I'm peculiar. You know, I called my yep. mom a few couple of years ago and I told her, I said, you know, mom, I, I've just really discovered that I, that I hate having nine to five jobs. I hate Monday through Friday, nine to five. And she goes, well, Marianne, I've known that since you were a kid. I'm like, well, I would have appreciated it if you had told me sooner because I've been trying to Why fit didn't you in. tell me, mom? Yeah, I've been trying to fit into this Monday through Friday, nine to five world, you right. know, from time to time. When I had my daughter, I told my husband, I said, don't ever count on my income because I hate jobs. I said, I'm not hard. I, I don't hate hard work. I just hate the the Monday through Friday, nine to five. I've always created ways to be able to stay home with my daughter and to kind of do my own thing. And so I think 
the hip senior has given me a way to be able to be expressive and to be able to, like I said, grow these types of relationships. Um, you know, we, as a magazine, we want seniors to consider this their magazine as well. You know, this isn't my magazine. It's not your magazine. It's everyone's magazine. And I want them to come to me and say, hey, I, I want to be interviewed or I want to be, I want to, you know, dictate you a story and, and have my story be in your magazine, or I want to send you a joke or, you know, just whatever it is that they want to do, I want to include them. And the nice thing about it being a digital magazine is that I can do that. I can do videos like this. I can include, you know, YouTube funny videos of animals and people making jokes and just, you know, all kinds of stupid stuff that people laugh at. Um, and it, it allots us the ability to be able to do stuff that we couldn't do if it was just a printed magazine. So right. um, I am so grateful that, that you chose to, to spend some of your day today. It's, today is Sunday, April, uh, August, August 16th. Um, and I'm just grateful that you chose to spend some of your day with us. It's an honor. It's a great honor, like I said. And, you know, I tell people all the time in the in work that I do, I've done it now for 12 years. Um, when I got my uh, bachelor's degree at Miami University in social work, um, again, someone came to me and it was another student, but a younger student, I was doing my internship at the, uh, at a mental health facility and uh, for my bachelor's degree. And she came to me and she said, you know, Sharon, she said, have you thought about going on and doing your master's degree? And I said, what? Nah, I've had enough. Oh my gosh. And she said, no, really, I'm serious. You need to think about it because she said, you will have more doors uh, uh, open for you with a master's degree in social work. And I said, really? And she said, yes. She said, the doors will open up for you better because there are fields like hospice uh, and other fields that you have to have a master's degree. And I said, really? And she said, yes. And so um, I thought, well, I don't know. She came to me the 1st of May and she said, you ought to try the one year advanced program. She asked me, she said, what's your grade average uh, right now? And I said, well, she said, it is, is it above 3.5? And I said, oh yeah, it's three, eight something. And she said, oh my God, she said, you need to try out, you got to write uh, like a, a, your own thesis of yourself, you know, a self-descriptive uh, narrative type thing. And she said, if you would do that, she said, I bet you, you would accept it. And I said, I don't know. And I said, plus I, I got to do more student loans. She said, hey, she said, it'd be worth it in the end. So sure enough, uh, the deadline for that was May the 30th was the deadline on that. I turned in uh, my script to uh, the University of Cincinnati, UC, and on a, on a, I think it was like a Friday, and on a Wednesday of the next week, they accepted me. And I got um, a $1,500 scholarship every quarter, which paid for my parking garage and my books, but it paid for something. Yeah. And I did the one year advanced program in the master's degree program at UC. And right from the get go, right out of uh, graduating there, I graduated in 2007 with my bachelor's at Miami in social work. And then the next year in 2008, graduated with my master's degree and right out of the gate I got a job in a hospice working for a home health and hospice company out of Dayton and um, I've never I've never done anything else this is it's the call we tell people all the time in order to do this job you have to have a calling to do it it's it's like something that 
you know, a nurse or a doctor, you know, they have to have a calling. That's just something that is different about it. And um, I've done quite well in the last 12 years, not bragging on me, but bragging on the fact that once I got into it and I'm comfortable uh, to talk to people about advanced directives, to talk to people about the end of their life, to talk to people about their funeral arrangements, all of the different things that most people would be very scary. Oh, they'd be scared to death to do. It doesn't come easy in the beginning, I can tell you, because those are subjects that are kind of like taboo. You know, no one wants to talk about their death. No one wants to talk about advanced directives. No one wants to talk about you know, any of that, but when you get used to it and you really feel it as a call, you're, you can be a tremendous blessing to people and families at the end of their life uh, uh, journey. It, it's just, it's like nothing else I've ever done. And I mean, I've been in uh, ministry all of my life from the time I was 11, you know, when we uh, started singing when I was 11 years old, and then uh, then my husband and I, we pastored for like 13 years, and I've always been in a ministry, but you can, this is a season of my life that is totally different, but is totally a reward. Not only, in, you know, a reward to me, but I, I look at it as, you know, when I lost both of my parents in 2010. Daddy uh, passed away in March of 2010, and then my mama in uh, November of that year. And uh, when you walk that road and you've been through those parts of your life, when I walk in a room with the white hair, being older, uh, they trust me. And they know that I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I've been there. And um, that to most families is such a huge relief that they can trust you. And I tell them, I'll say, you know what? Yell at me all you want to. Scream, vent, tell me whatever you need to tell me. I will not think anything different of you. I'm an active listener. And when they do that, and before they, the, the conversation, whether it's in the, on the phone or I'm at their house and I get ready to leave uh, or whatever, when they say to me, thank you, that's the reward right there. That right there. It just has to be two little words. Thank you. I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I know it. And uh, this season of my life has been very rewarding. You know, uh, my mama didn't retire till she was 75. Well, I still got a few years left, don't I? Hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. something when people learn what their calling is and what really feeds their soul. Like for me. Yes. I'm I have taught seniors how to use technology for so long. I can't remember a time that I didn't. Um, but about five years ago when I got divorced, um, about three years before that, I started looking at my life and saying, what am I doing? What am I going to do? How am I going to support myself um, once I get divorced? And what really feeds my soul so that I want to continue doing that and teaching seniors technology was, was that thing for me. Um, the yes. senior is, is icing on the cake for that for me as you know I love it just as much but if I had to give one or the other I would just I would just teach um, but this gives me the ability to be able like I said to build these relationships and get quality information and, and put some smiles on seniors faces as well right so the two kind of go hand in hand for me right now but the teaching technology part I had someone the other day came up to me and after a lesson and the one of the rare people that I've actually taught face to face with recently. And she said, um, she goes, are the lessons always like this? And I was like, I don't know. Did you like it? 
know, like, I don't know how yeah. to answer that one. And she goes, yeah, she goes, you were just so patient and you went over things with me until I got it, you know? And I was like, well, yeah, right. I said, because a lot of times people's grandchildren will take their technology, do it for them and then hand it back to them. And I'm like, well, that didn't teach them how to do it. And so, no. you know, so I've learned that, you know, the, one of the most given talents that I have is the ability to be patient with senior citizens. Exactly. And I imagine and, that you know, you that that's a, a, a huge part of, of your talent with that as well. Well, and you know, the, the families and patients will ask the question, well, how long is it going to be? How, how long do I have? And I, you know, you can, I tell them, uh, there's no way I know the day or the hour. And I tell them, you know, I could get in my car today, leaving your house, and I could be in a car accident and be out of this life. But there is a motto uh, that I, that I tell them, I, I tell them, but here's the deal. If it ain't your time to go, you got to stay. But if it's your time to go, you can't stay. You got to go. And they'll look at me and they'll go, you know what? That makes sense. You're right. If it's my time to go and the good Lord sees fit to take me, then I'm out of here. Yeah. But if it ain't my time to go, I just need to enjoy every moment that I have left with my family. That's right. See, I wish you were and around that, with me. I wish you were around my grandmother when she passed. My one, I had a grandmother that lived up in Versailles, Ohio, and she was, she was scared. And I wish somebody had the foresight to say something like that to her. And, and, you know, my uncles were all like, you know, oh, it's going to happen, whatever. But, you know, just someone to give you more thought. To, to make sense that of it. See? Yeah. Just so you can make some, and and that's just that's just downright kind of cornbread country. All of my family's from the south. If you couldn't tell that from the accent, and it, you know the one thing that the, the southern people we love God, we love our families, and uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. That's you know that that's how I was raised, and uh, truth. You know, people just want you to be real. When you're real with somebody, it's a total difference than uh, just being a, a facade of a person. You know, be yourself, be real. I said that just this past week to a friend of mine. I said, you know, all people are looking for is people to be real with them. Yeah. Be real. Don't be something that you're not. Be yourself. And now, as I've gotten older, I can make that excuse. Well, you know, I'm I'm in my sixties. I'm old. You know, they call me old school. They'll say the young girls at at work will say, "Oh, Miss Sharon, you're old school." Well, yeah, I am old school. But what does that really mean? Well, old school to me means I've been down the road, sweetheart. <laughs> I've been down that road. I know what it's all about. And if that's me being old school, then I thank my God every single day that I'm old school because I do know things that some of you have never been through. I, I say that to the young girls, you know, never been through it. So you don't really know <laughs> when you called the other day and uh, I think it was, was it? Friday that you called or yeah yeah oh, I don't remember what happened yesterday but I'll take your word on it. Friday. <laughs> well when you called I said to you uh you said something about an interview and that and I said well I can't do it right now because uh I'm I'm putting away my vegetables and canning my stuff for the uh, and I have a boss right now she's younger and she said to me you still do that I said, well, yeah, I can vegetables every year that I can. Now, last year I couldn't. I was so busy, and I really miss it. And I was running low on all of my green beans and my jelly and 
all the stuff that my family enjoys and I enjoy to do for other people. And she said, I just can't believe that you can, that you, you, you pressure cook and pressure can. Yes, ma'am. I can tell you how many minutes it takes to do green beans on 10 pounds of pressure on your cooker, on your pressure canner, 10 pounds of pressure for 25 minutes once the jingling starts. I know all of that. And you know what? (laughs) If something were to happen, God forbid an apocalypse or something, I could start a fire out in the backyard and I could can my own food. So I've got the jars, I've got everything. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got to wrap up. What's the if if you could only give people these days one piece of advice from from all your wisdom, what would that one last thing be before we wrap this up? Just be you. Be yourself. Be who you are. Because if you will be who you are, be true to yourself, then everybody else around you is going to see that you are real. When you have people say to you, you're real, that's the biggest compliment that anyone can give me. I'm not, I'm not anything but me. That's it. And there's only one of me, only one of you. Miss Marion, only one of you. And All you right. are the white-headed singing bling queen social worker, Sharon That Montgomery. is correct. <laughs> yes. Well, Sharon, thank you so much for, for being with us today. Um, if thank you're watching you. this video with us, you are watching it in The Hip Senior, and we appreciate that you are um, honoring us with the time of, of spending that time with um, reading The Hip Senior and um, supporting us as well. So head on over to thehipsenior.com every month on the first and be able to see the next one that's coming out next month as well. So thank you again, Sharon. I really appreciate you spending time with us. Thank you. And tell Shelby Duncan I said hello. (laughs) You call her and you tell her yourself. I sure shall. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure she would love to hear from you, but I will mention it to her. All right, honey. Thank you. Bye, everybody.